Mr. Vice President and Charlotte, thanks so much for joining me today. You bet, Michael. Thanks, Good to be with you. The book is Go Home to Dinner. Uh, I love that title. Uh, of course, it's not simply about dinner. It's about much more than that. But uh, Mr. Vice President, why did you write this book and where did you get the idea? Uh, well, Michael, again, uh, we, we appreciate being with you. Uh, and, uh, you know, we uh, a couple of years ago, we it became public that we'd signed a two book deal. One was an autobiography and then another was going to be a book about uh, our faith and family. And a friend came up to me and said, you know, I'm really interested in, in reading your autobiography. I, I like politics. I like history. But he said, the book I really want to read is how do you have a family like yours living the life that you've lived? Yeah. And that was where Go Home for Dinner was born. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, look, I, as I said to him in that moment, I'll say to you, I mean, we give God the glory for everything we've been able to do uh, in our lives. Uh, but I'm someone that really believes that faith makes a family uh, and family makes a life. And uh, as we write about in the book, you know, there were there were lessons along the way where, where I learned after about 10 years of marriage to really uh, make God's priorities our priorities, to, to be intentional about putting our family first. And uh, it all began with going home for dinner and uh, being there for our family. And uh, uh, everything we've been able to do in our lives, I think, has proceeded out of, uh, uh, out of, out of working every day to be, be intentional about putting our family and our faith first. I'm curious, why is dinner so important? As I alluded to earlier, it's more, you know, the book is more about dinner, but it is about dinner. And you talk about placing an emphasis on dinner. You talk about when you when you moved your family to Washington, D.C. And, and how you when you were elected to Congress, you would go home for dinner in between votes. And when you were too busy to do that, sometimes uh, your wife and your kids would meet you maybe on the steps of the Capitol. I'm, I'm curious, why is that one meal so important? Uh, Charlotte, you can chime in here if you want to. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that making time to have a meal together and sit down together is really important. I'm not sure it necessarily has to be dinner. And we also kind of talk about, I mean, some people can't be home for dinner. I mean, some people are on the night shift or in the military. And I mean, my husband's in the military and he yeah. definitely can't be home for dinner a lot of nights and he yeah. would like to be. Um, I think this, the idea of sitting down together over a meal with a family, even if it's not dinner is, is really important because I mean, there are, there's research done on this and we kind of talk about this in the book of sitting together and how that does really make a difference in, in your family life. But it also, we say, you know, it, it's where you hash things out too. I mean, you have you talk about your day you talk about mundane things maybe but then you also talk about like having ar arguments having conversations about politics and things that are maybe awkward that is does kind of happen over the dinner table but it, it teaches us how to have those um disagreements maybe um and in a in a loving way yeah. um i do think that having so having that time together whether it's a different meal or whether it's just intentionally having that time together as a family um is really important and i also think the title of the book um is impactful because it is it is you know a, a directive you know go home for dinner make so the the spirit behind that i think too is make an effort to be with your family and that's kind of a big theme i think throughout the book is making sure your family knows you want to be together, you want to be with them, um, even when you have to work late nights, even when you're deployed. Um, if they know that you want to be there, that makes a really big impact in making the effort to go over there, making the effort to go to the soccer game and the violin recital and things like that. Um, yeah. It's really impactful. So I'm not sure it's only different, but it definitely is. Different. There's a great story, Mr. Vice President, about a time when you were a U.S. representative. And you had to choose between attending a meeting, uh, I believe, with the new president, George W. Bush, or going to, I believe it was Charlotte's, was it Charlotte's violin recital? Yeah. Cool. Tell, me, t t tell me about that. That's an amazing story. <laughs> well, you know, as, as Charlotte said, we, we, why were we trying to make decisions along the way after we, after I, hearing a sermon in about 1997, after I'd been married about 10 years, our kids had just come away. 
I, I, I've lost a couple of campaigns at the row, sorting out my life, trying to figure out our priorities. And, and I heard a wonderful sermon that, uh, out of Genesis uh, 18. It, was, it essentially speaks about the way God said to Abraham, um, you know, I, I've chosen him to see to the members of his own household that they would do what's right, just so that the Lord would fulfill his purpose for him. When I, when I heard that sermon and heard that verse, it was uh, it was very freeing to me because I, I felt like uh, I, I'd found the, the mission of my life. It wasn't uh, as I'd always felt to go out and make a difference in the world. My, my mission uh, was to live out the vows that I'd, I'd, uh, I'd exchanged with my, my wonderful wife, Karen, to be the kind of husband and father that God was calling me to be, with the promise in that verse that God would fulfill whatever purpose he had for me. And, uh, and so as time went on, uh, you know, we moved our family to Washington, D.C., as Charlotte just said, and, and it was precisely so we could be home for dinner so that I could, I wouldn't miss those routine things. The kids lived in our nation's capital during the school year and then went home to Indiana regularly, but for most of the summers in a little home we had in the country. And, but that was one of many experiences where she had a, she had a, a violin recital. Uh, I was invited to a meeting in the West Wing with the new president of the United States. And, uh, um, but um, for me, at the end of the day, it wasn't a tough call because I, I, I knew what was what was most important. And uh, uh, but I, but I never knew how long that story would go on in the life of our family. But, uh, little it's a great story. Tweaked out that that violin. She, you know, it might have been, might as well have been a Stradivarius. I mean, she was uh, <laughs> from my standpoint, she was a genius. And, and, uh, but it was just one of those moments that's made possible when when you make decisions in your life and your career. Uh, that uh, put your family first. Charlotte, do you have any memories of uh, maybe how your father placed family first, even though he was in a position of authority, you know, either 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 as governor or as representative? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, there's a lot of examples, I would say, throughout little things that we did. I mean, one of the chapters is take your daughter to breakfast and it's about creating traditions with your kids. And he and I usually would go to breakfast on my birthday. And that was just something we kind of started doing. But then we talk about other things where he, um, you know, made a special effort to kind of do things or take us kids on trips that he was doing as a congressman that were of our particular and our particular interest. So whether it was bringing my sister, um, I think you guys went out to like Hollywood. You, we went, I mean, we went to plays a lot. Um, Michael went to a shuttle launch. I mean, it was things like doing things like that that you would kind of. I remember we would kind of alternate which kid was going on the next trip with him, so we could be there with him. So even when he was gone, we could still go and have these experiences and, um, you know, just grow closer to the family because it is that time. I think together those little moments um that make a big difference and just make it so that you're not living separate lives mr vice president i have a question about the temptation to be a workaholic in a, in a place of leadership because it would be very easy to rationalize and to say you know as the governor of indiana thousands of families are depending on me millions of people in the state are depending on me um my one family can wait did you ever have those types of questions pop in your mind during these types of moments? Michael, all the time. <laughs> Plus the fact that uh, I love to work hard. I, I really do. I, I love to uh, take steps that I think can make a difference in the world. And, and uh, But that, that's part of what we capture in, in Go Home for Dinner is that in those, in those early days coming to realize that you know, the, the title of the book actually came from when I was in, in the Congress, people would come up to me after a few years when I started to show up in a lot of public debates and started to show up on the television a little bit. People would come up and they'd ask a flattering question, which kind of goes something like, uh, where do you see yourself in five years? In, in Washington, D.C., everybody's got a plan. Anytime anybody would ask me, where do you see yourself in five years? I'd answer it the same way. I'd say, home for dinner hmm. because I, when they 
when they'd react with a little bit of surprise, as we wrote in the book, I I just very just say, well, look, you, you, I I don't have to be motivated to work hard. I don't have to be motivated to want to be out and making a difference in the world. But I, I do have to decide uh, that I'm going to put my family first. And, and, uh, and from the earliest days in, in Charlotte, I think one of the redeeming things about doing this book with my daughter was she uh, is starting a young family of her own now. And she, she came to realize that, uh, you know, at least in your dad's case, uh, it's not always easy to do that. It's not easy to put your family first and to go home for dinner and just put the work down, give your family Sunday fun. Um, but uh, those decisions over the years have been again that, and again affirmed by God and uh, in the opportunities that come before us. But I, I like to tell people if, uh, if God didn't exist, it would make no sense uh, to take time away from work. Um, but the Bible actually tells us that he, he gives to his beloved even while they sleep. I mean, I, I honestly believe that when we make his priorities our priorities, God God will open doors of opportunity the way he has for our family um, and for hers that we, we never saw coming. I would like the two of you, if you would, to to um, uh, to give me your thoughts on an important line in the book where, uh, Mr. Vice President, you write, our culture tells us that you can have it all, but you really can't, uh, not without somebody paying the price. Um, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I think we I think we live in a time in the popular culture where uh, where young people in in uh, my kids' generation are terrible, told you can have it all. You, you don't have to give up on one thing or another. Um, but the truth is, uh, a success and more than that, um, uh, you know, achieving meaning in your life comes from making choices and and having having priorities. And uh, um, but but that being said, I, I I go back to that Bible verse that so impacted me so many years ago, Michael. That um, I, I honestly think that there is a promise that as as we uh, as we keep the promises that, that we made to our spouses, as we are there and keep a priority uh, on time with our families, that uh, I think the Lord honors that. I think he, uh, he, he'll bless us in ways unexpected, but you have, you have to begin by understanding uh, that um, uh, when, when you make a decision to go home for dinner, when you make a decision to give your family Sundays, when you, when you make the kind of decisions we talk about, um, hopefully with a lot of humility and with a smile in, in this book, uh, that it has to be intentional from your heart. Charlotte, do you have any thoughts on that on that subject? Yeah, I, I agree. I think especially in you know my generation, kind of the millennial generation, I think there is the idea that you can totally give everything to your work and you can also give things to your family and that, you know, it's 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 fine and it'll, it'll all turn out great. And I, I do think that there are, I, I just agree with what he was saying, but also that I, I think it's important also to say that it's easy to look at, you know, my dad and my parents and see these things that they've achieved and think, okay, well, you know, then that's definitely going to happen if I always put my family above my job. And that's not necessarily true. I mean, I think that God did honor them and like their choices, but I don't, I think that sometimes your family is going to come first and your career might take a dip at for a time, you know what I mean? So, and I think, I think moms struggle with that, especially, and I've experienced yeah. that I'm a mom now and working part-time and trying to figure out like, how do I, you know, take time for her when she's really little and, um, and I mean forever, but especially right now when I'm with her all day. And also keep doing something that I want to be doing. And it's, it is the question of putting your family first all the time, I think it is the answer. I mean, the question is, how do you balance it? So mm -hmm. I think that that's important to remember. Um, and I, I like that part of the book because I think it's very honest and just direct of saying you can't really have it all. Something's going to take a, a cut. And if it's your career or your family, which would you rather it be? And yeah. I think that's um, that's kind of one of the takeaways too. And and in the book, there's times when 
um, you know, failures that he had in his career, you know, that dipped and he thought, oh, I'm never going to be in politics again. And I just fit, I'm not going to do that. And so, but, and he had to kind of learn how to do it the way that honored God, work in politics in a way that honored God. But there's also a chapter about fa- called falling short when, <laughs> when you didn't put your family first. So, I mean, we tried to be very honest and humble about in it and and my dad says in the book I'm you know I'm not the perfect husband or the perfect father and um we wouldn't want people to think oh okay the pence is out of figured out because there's going to be times when you don't live up to that standard but just trying to reach that standard I think and remembering one of the things is going to have to take a back seat and it should probably not be your family amen to that uh, as we begin to close here, uh, I, you guys have done this already a little bit, but I'm just curious, can, could you give me some advice or give the viewers advice on um, what families who don't have time for dinner can do? Maybe they have different shifts at work, uh, military, of course, as, as you said, Charlotte, you know, for folks who just, they never can have dinner together. How can they apply the principles of this book uh, to their life to, to keep family first? Well, you know, America's changed a lot. Um, uh, our work habits have changed a lot. Uh, we're, we're speaking online now. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, the, the truth is that uh, when I came into the world, about uh, about one in 10 households in this country uh, had just one occupant. Now, the, about, about one out of three Americans live alone. And there's, by many accounts, there's an epidemic uh, of loneliness. And I hope when people see this book, they don't, as Charlotte just said very eloquently, Michael, I, I hope they don't uh, uh, see us as Ozzy and Harriet and, uh, you know, just uh, traditional family and home for dinner every night, but that they actually see a, uh, a family that was very busy, that was caught up in lots of extraordinary experiences, but always hewed to those core principles of, of putting our family first throughout finding a way uh, to, to be together, finding a way to set, uh, set Sundays aside. And, you know, when I was vice president, Michael, I will tell you, uh, giving my family Sunday usually ended up on most Sundays, just meaning church and a few hours in the afternoon before all of the uh, events around the country and around the world and my responsibilities would catch up with me. But, uh, but I think, however, uh, people implement these principles. Um, uh, they'll they'll never regret they'll never regret a decision to put uh, put their faith and their family first. And at a time when we we have so much division in our country, when it, it seems like um, more Americans are more anxious about the future than ever before, you know we uh, we end this book with a simple uh, admonition: if you, if you wonder what you can do to save America, save your family go home for dinner, strengthen uh, uh, the ties that bind the people that you cherish most. And that's what every one of us can do to strengthen America. Charlotte, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I would just say that there throughout the book, really, I mean, every chapter pretty much is a, di- a direct statement saying yeah. not, you know, do this in an annoying way, but it, it's advice. It's saying, these are things you can do um, to put your family first, but to remind your family that they come over your job. So I think that constant reminder is really important. And it's either going to be done effectively through your actions or your words, but you can do both. There are going to be times when you can't be home for dinner. There are going to be times when you are very busy with certain things um and it can it could just be other family problems there could be health issues so we we do give a lot of uh you know examples i think of you know times when it's not gonna look perfect um but i think just the sentiment behind it is to undistractedly be present with your family when you are with them as well that's a huge thing i think that the um you know new generations especially can take away is that being present is just as important as being there you can be there and be mentally distracted and be on your phone or whatever so i think that just constantly yeah reminding your family that they come above your job and i think that you can do that in a lot of different ways 
but it's something that you have to actively do every day. And I think I wouldn't have ever questioned that. I, my family, my, my siblings and our family came above my dad's job, and my mom's job. And I, I just didn't. And I easily could have known, oh, he's an important politician and I'm just a kid, but I never felt that way because they did actively all the time <laughs> reinforce that we have family time. We have family nights. We say that we, one of the chapters is have a family night. So if you can't have dinner together every night, which most, a lot of people can't have a family night, have time when you're really all together, um, give your family Sunday, give your, it, maybe it's Saturday. Um, so, so we do talk about different ways to do it. And I think that um, I hope people come away with the, just the sentiment behind going home for dinner, um, putting your family first and reminding them that they come first. And I, I also would say, Michael, that one of the joys of this was being able to share that for us, everything begins with faith. You know, I, I put my faith in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior when I was a freshman in college, but it was after a, a season of doubt. Um, and uh, uh, my daughter went through a very similar journey, we ended up studying overseas and uh, coming to her own personal faith in Christ and uh, and that's why one of the things that we do is we, we always want to raise our kids to think for themselves, even while we sought to train up our children in the way they should go, as the Bible tells us. But um, but encouraging families to you know to uh, not fear fear your doubts or your children's doubts. And uh, at the end of the book, we uh, uh, we we give a gentle word of encouragement as people that might read this book might be uh, looking for uh, for ways that they can. They can strengthen their families and strengthen their lives. And at the, at the end of the day, for us, it all comes down to our faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, final question for you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, you said a few minutes ago, you said that you believe that even though this book has a simple premise, this is what is needed to save America. I think some people would be a little surprised by that. What, just briefly tell me, what did you mean by that? Look, the, the American family is, is in trouble. Uh, the truth is that people are putting off marriage. They're putting off having children. Some people are just choosing not to be married at all. Uh, and we know the divorce rate in this country is heartbreaking. And uh, um, and but, but the truth is that, that it's been the faith and the families of this country that have always been the wellspring of our nation's strength. And as we as we look at wars and rumors of wars abroad, as we look at challenges in the economy. Everything from our border to inflation to rising energy costs. People are frustrated. I, I just came out of a presidential campaign uh, that came to a close a few short weeks ago, and I heard those concerns. And more often than not, Michael, I heard people say to me, what can I do uh, other than vote, other than get behind someone who shares my values and, uh, and, and my ideals? And uh, and I, and I I can't help but think that uh, go home for dinner is coming at just the right time because uh, for us we're we're turning back to private life, uh, focusing on uh, on our future, and, and I I really do hope as Charlotte and I wrote in the at the close of the book that um, the people know that what they can do and it's Ronald Reagan actually said in his farewell address that all all great change in America begins at the dinner table. Uh, and when we think about ways that we can heal our land, we think about ways that we can restore our country at home and abroad. I think looking at uh, what the philosopher Edmund Burke called our own little platoon, looking at our own family, strengthening the ties that bind the people uh, that we care about the most. It's where people can go. So if you want to you want to save America, go home for dinner. Amen to that. We've been speaking to uh, Vice President Mike Pence and Charlotte Pence Bond. The book is Go Home to Dinner. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Great to be with you today.